Some of the information missing on the SID may be available at the LRR site. On PPI scopes, it is easier to distinguish between real and false targets. For this reason, target information may be obtained from the LRR for use at the DC. Under some conditions, the height finder may supply information about targets that is not available on the search radars. That is, the height finder may be able to discriminate between targets and chaff because of its vertical search pattern and presentation. The data presented to the DC computer from any site can be reduced by mapping at that site. Mapping also aids in distinguishing target data by removing chaff and clutter from the system. The technique used in mapping is simply to paint out the clutter areas on the mapping scope with a semi-opaque mapping fluid. In addition to this manual mapping technique, automatic clutter mapping may be used. At the LRR, in addition to mapping, there are certain other counter-counter measures available against mechanical jamming. Two of these that are usually available to the AJ operator are non-coherent MTI and velocity filters. However, scope adjustments at the LRR against newly dispensed chaff are normally not helpful. Any adjustment in trace brilliance or video gain may result in further degradation of all returns on the scope. At the direction center, the ASO RICMO team has the option of selecting the LRR providing the best data available. During normal operations, the inputs from the sector's long-range radars are combined and this composite data appears on the SID. In an ECM environment, however, returns from one or more of the LRRs may provide good track data with little chaff as compared with others in the sector. In this event, the ASO may select the site or sites where the least chaff jamming is occurring and continue the input of data only from those sites. Eliminating returns from one or more sites may also serve to prevent further overloading of the system. There are also ECCM actions that can be taken by the tracking team. These actions may be largely a matter of try and see. One of the options, for example, is the use of the expanded scope. Sometimes it is easier to differentiate targets from chaff with the scope expanded to the maximum. However, scope expansion may only magnify the clutter and make tracking more difficult. Likewise, the use of the history feature both helps and hinders the tracking functions. While the history feature retains the data for a longer period, this increased data contained in the history may further degrade the display. Also, the sector may be divided so that each track monitor has only a small area of responsibility. The three preceding ECCM actions have illustrated several ways the tracking team may counter mechanical jamming. At the same time, the weapons team is directing the use of weapons. This function is under the direction of the senior weapons director assisted by the WD and the IND. The success of this team is largely dependent on the surveillance and tracking teams. In short, when surveillance and tracking functions are degraded, the ability to properly commit and position weapons will suffer. Familiarity with the appearance, characteristics, and effects of mechanical jamming devices by every member of the weapons team will help to minimize weapons problems. In general, targets creating the most serious ECM effects have the highest priority. Although we have seen some of the effects of mechanical jamming on a single SAGE sector, any attack by hostile aircraft would certainly not be so limited. Mechanical jamming alone is not the most serious ECM threat. However, it can seriously overload the SAGE system, confuse the operators, and degrade the tracking and weapons functions. It is most likely to be used in connection with electronic jamming, and the combination is a very serious threat to air defense. Specific counter-countermeasures against mechanical jamming should be taken as quickly as possible to prevent further degradation to the system. There are two fundamental situations which the battle staff should take into consideration in a mechanical jamming environment. 
First, there may be more tracks presented on the displays than there are real targets, because tracks may have been initiated on shaft. Second, real targets may not have been detected and tracked because of the chaff. In the continuing battle to develop more effective weapons and counter weapons, new mechanical jamming devices, tactics and techniques are being constantly created. And this progress will certainly continue. To meet this threat, all jobs in air defense demand continuous learning and development of new skills in the application of electronic counter-countermeasures. <laughs>